All right, today I want to walk you through all my chart layout settings. I'm going to show you all the indicators I use, all the drawing tools that I use, everything to make me the most efficient trader as possible because I trade fast moving stocks. I don't have time to come over to certain menus and then scroll and look for a certain trend line or whatever. I don't have time to click on certain moving averages just to see what that value is. Everything has to be laid out in the most efficient way as possible. And that's one of the reasons why I use TradingView for my charts is because they make it very easy to do so. This is probably the most efficient user-friendly platform there is on the market. And plus it's super cheap. So they do have a free subscription, but to really get the most out of this, you need to have a paid subscription. Uh, it's really cheap, only 10, 20 bucks a month. Um, I use the Pro Plus version, which is I think 19, 20 dollars a month, and all that does is allow me to have pre and post market data. I'll show you how to put that up on your charts here in a minute. But this is going to be the default setting no matter what subscription you get. The very first thing I do is come over to this sell and buy tab and I just hide this. I just right click inside it and click hide buy sell panel. All this is is a paper trading panel. Good thing about this platform is they have that paper trading feature so whenever I'm testing out a new strategy or a new idea I can use the uh, this buy and sell panel along with my charts without risking any money. But since I trade with real money most of the time I just hide this. Next thing I do is I right click inside the chart here and click on settings. And very first thing I do is come down to theme and click dark. I don't like to have a white theme because it's kind of hard on the eyes and it looks awful. So there's the dark theme, looks way much cooler. So click dark. Next thing I do is come over to the top left and click style. I like to change all of my candlesticks to white and pink. I don't like red and green candlesticks because one, it looks Christmassy, and two, I like to have my moving averages red and green, and if red and green moving averages kind of blend in with my candlesticks, it makes it harder to read. So you can make them whatever color you want, just the point is make your moving averages, your support lines, your trend lines, your candlesticks all different colors. So I like uh, my bullish candles to be white or in other words candles that uh, have an uptrend and all my bearish candles to be pink. So all the downtrending candles. So over here on the left is all the up candles. Over here on the right is all the down candles. Make sure that the show line is check marked. It should be by default. All that is is this uh, dotted line right here showing the uh, current trading price. It's also highlighted in this white box here over here on the right side price scale. I like to keep mine white. If this was a down candle, it would be pink, but I like to keep my uh, line white so I know that that is the current price in relation to all these candlesticks. Next thing I do is come over to scales and over here on the right column right here you want to make sure that countdown to bar close is clicked. All this does is show the countdown or the time left on the current candle. So right now this is the one minute chart. There is six seconds left on this candle. So I have a pretty good idea that this candle is going to form that certain shape. One of the reasons why I like knowing how much time is left on the candle is because once it gets down to about 20 seconds, 10 seconds, I know that that candle shape is probably going to take form. And this is a more advanced topic, but once you get an idea of that candle shape, you can predict with higher probability what the next candle might do or what how the stock may trade in the future. So it's very handy to have that countdown right underneath the current price. Some people use their system clock or they might have another time stamp somewhere but I like to keep mine all in line with the price so my eyes aren't moving all over the place it's just all in one spot. Next thing is I come over to background and get rid of these horizontal and vertical lines. All I do is click on the vertical grid line box move that scroll line to the right same thing for the 
horizontal grid line box, move that scroll bar to the right. Now I have this nice clean setup. No grid lines to interfere with what I'm looking at on the charts. Next thing I do is come over to time zones. Make sure that you click on the correct time zone you're in. And if you are a Pro Plus subscriber, you get pre and post market data. So click on that and make sure that these two boxes are clicked as well. Um, you can change that color to whatever you want, but extended hours, let's change it to blue. Everything that's in blue is going to be pre or post market. So right now, this is pre market. Uh, this is uh, 8.45 a.m. as you see down here on the, the time. So this is pre market right here. And in session, let's just make that yellow. This isn't how I have mine set up, but whoops. So j just to show you that you can change the color of whatever you want. But personally, I like to have my extended hours set to this light gray and then my in session to no color to have this uh, black background back here. So this is how I like to have mine set up. Light gray for pre-market, this black color for in session. Next tab over here is the trading tab. I don't mess with this. This is for your paper trading feature. If you are using this strictly for paper trading, you might want to fool around with that. Events, I don't really play uh, earnings or splits or dividends. I do like to know when uh, splits happen, but dividends and earnings, I don't really play. But if you do, have all these checked. And if you come over here on the daily chart, you can see all the dividends and earnings dates that they have. So this is uh, NVIDIA right here. The next earnings report they have is February 10th. So um, you can see uh, things like that on that. So all you got to do to save all this is just click OK, and these are your chart settings. Next thing is I come over down here to the volume bar, and notice that the volume kind of goes into these candlesticks. It's not separate. It's kind of blended in. All you have to do is right click in the volume, come over to move to, and then click over to new pane below. So now your volume and your candlesticks are separated. Very important to have volume, guys. It's one of the best indicators you can use to predict where stock might go in the future. So next thing we're going to do is add our indicators. Now I only use three indicators. I use moving averages, VWAP, and volume. Anything more than that, you're going to really get confused. You're going to get overwhelmed. You're going to hesitate. Any other indicator, you're just going to add more noise, and it's just going to be more confusing. So I just use moving averages. I trade on the one-minute chart, so I use uh, the exponential moving average. So I can just type in moving on this search bar. There's hundreds of different indicators on here. So type in moving on the search bar, then you can click moving average exponential. Now, if you were trading on the daily chart, I would use the actual real moving average, but moving average exponential is better for a faster time frame. So I'm going to click this twice because I use two moving averages, the nine moving average and the 20. So I clicked it once. You see it pop up over here on the left. Click it again. Here's another one. The next one I use is VWAP. So I'm going to type in VWAP right here. Click on VWAP. And those are my indicators for my charts. I'm going to switch back to the one minute time frame because VWAP doesn't show on uh, the daily chart. So here's the one minute time frame. Let me scale this back so you can see it better okay so now we need to format our input and our style so all you gotta do is click on this gear tab right here next to the moving average indicator and for a style well let's do inputs first I use the 9 moving average and the 20 moving average so click 9 or type in 9 if it's not already there click style and I like to have my nine moving average set to red. Click OK. Come over to the next EMA and click the gear tab. Click input. Type in 20. Click style. And I like to have my 20 moving average set to green. 
Next is come down to VWAP, click on the format little gear tab right here, and VWAP, you don't need to put in a input, just leave it as default. Uh, click that as orange or whatever color you want and click OK. So now I can see where the 9 moving average is, the 20 and VWAP. The 9 is red, the 20 is green, VWAP is orange. Those are all the indicators that I use. So now that I have all my indicators, my color set, my volume set, next is my drawing tools. Drawing tools are uh, used all the time. I'm constantly drawing as the day goes on and certain patterns are forming. But a lot of other charting platforms make it really inefficient to draw. Some of them you have to right click and then you go to uh, drawing tools and then you go to another menu and then you got to click trend line. That takes way too much time. Same thing over here on the left. You have to come over to the, this toolbar on the left, click on this little arrow right here, click on that, find what you want to look for, and then uh, click it. That takes way too much time. The only lines that I use are trend lines and horizontal lines. Everything else is pretty excessive. If you like to use it, you're more than welcome to. That's awesome. But what I'm talking about is uh, finding an efficient way to quickly draw a trend line. So what I do is I come over here to this uh, second symbol right here, click on this arrow, and then click trend line star. So I'm clicking this star in the trend line. What this is going to do is pop up a favorites toolbar. I can move this toolbar wherever I want and quickly use it to make a trend line. So if I'm in a fast moving trade and I need to quickly draw a trend line, I can just come over here, click it, bam, trend line. I can set my trend lines to different colors. I can set it to yellow. I can make it wider or thinner. I can make it dotted or solid, whatever. Um, it's going to stay with whatever you leave it as uh, previously. So. Let's say we're currently uh, trading right now at this moment. I want to draw a quick trend line. Just come over to my mouse, click, bam, trend line. See, it's so much faster. It, it, sure, I may be saving only a second or two, but when you're trading fast-moving stocks, every second counts. So I can move this little box wherever I want. I like to keep mine up here. If you want to keep it right in the middle, you're welcome to. If you want to put it on the bottom, wherever you want. You can add to this favorites toolbox. So the next line I like to have is horizontal line. So just come over to the horizontal line, click the star, and now it's added. So now I can quickly add support and resistance. Very fast and efficient. Now notice that over here on the right price scale that the support and resistance line is highlighted in this yellow. So I know that yellow over here on the price is uh, going to be a support or resistance line that I've drawn. If I change this to, let's change it to green, I know that this green line, this green highlighted price is this price that I've done on this resistance line that I've drawn. We're going to change that back to yellow. But notice that sometimes these uh, titles or these prices overlap. So all you got to do is right click inside the chart, click settings, come over to scales, and then click no overlapping labels. So now uh, your labels won't overlap once you click OK. And also, uh, you can also pinpoint your moving average prices as well. So before, and a lot of other charting platforms do this, I have no idea why, but you would have to put your mouse over the moving average and then look over on the indicator scale. So here's the indicator scales located on the left. If I wanted to see what the 20 moving average is right here at this point is, it's 154.33 highlighted in green on the top left hand corner. So we're over here, I would have to do that. That takes way too much time. First I have to move my mouse, concentrate on moving my mouse over this part, and then move my eyes away over here to look what that is. That takes way too much time. So all you got to do in the setting tab is click indicator last value. So you click on that and now your indicator last value are located on the price scales. So this is uh, 
how I'm able to see, hey, where's exactly the nine moving average? Oh, it's 154.55. I know exactly where it's at. I don't have to move my mouse towards that area. I can see where the nine moving average is, the 20 moving averages. I can see where VWAP is. I can see my most recent drawn support line. I can see the current price trading. I can see the most recent resistance line that I've drawn. Everything is right here. I can see the amount left on the candle everything is all in one place and that's what saves me a bunch of time trading within these uh, charts so every second counts every millisecond counts the more you can save yourself from looking all over the place all over your screen trying to find certain prices or the time or whatever the the more you can uh, eliminate that the better the very last thing i do is show multiple time frames of my chart so this is the one minute chart right here if i want to show the daily chart and also the five minute chart i come over to this box right here it says select layout click on that and you can choose whatever layout you want whatever you fancy if you like to see four stocks at a time if you like to see five stocks at a time six or eight different time frames or whatever you can choose it i personally like to have uh, three time frames up at all times so I click uh, this one right here, and whoops, let me um, click settings. And so notice that uh, everything's different on the on the right here. The, these are the charts that we just configured. All you have to do is right click inside that uh, chart right there that you made, click settings, and then click apply to all. Now everything has the same setting that you just configured. So this is the one minute chart, which is, uh, which is what I like to have on the left. Over here on the top right, I like to have that as the five minute chart. So you just click on that chart and then come over here to the time frame, click five minute, and then down here on the bottom right, click inside that and click the daily chart. So this is how I like to have uh, my layouts and uh, time frames set up. I like to have the five minute over here, the daily down here, and the one minute. You can change this however much you want. Also, uh, I like to hide these indicator values because you don't need them over on the right and also on the left. So all you gotta do is click this minus sign and it will hide those. So same thing on all these other ones. If they are showing or getting in your way, you can click quickly hide those. So that is how I have my charting platform set up with all the settings. I hope this helps you if you are struggling to find an efficient way to do your charts. Thank you so much for watching.